Welcome to Centurions, where we feature man-made objects, either physical or abstract, that has existed for over 100 years. My name is Dimitri, and this week, we'll be talking about the Eiffel Tower. The one and only French Eiffel Tower, the Parisian landmark that is also a technological masterpiece in building construction history. When the French government was organizing the International Exposition of 1889 to celebrate the centenary of the French Revolution, a competition was held for designs for a suitable monument. More than 100 plans were submitted and the Centennial Committee accepted that of the noted bridge engineer Gustav Eiffel. Eiffel's concept of a 300 meter, which is 984 foot tower, built almost entirely of open lattice wrought iron, aroused amazement, skepticism, and no little opposition on aesthetic grounds. When completed, the tower served as the entrance gateway to the exposition. Nothing remotely like the Eiffel Tower had ever been built, it was twice as high as the Dome of St. Peter's in Rome or the Great Pyramid of Giza. In contrast to such older monuments, the tower was erected in only about two years from 1887 to 1889. With a small labor force and at slight cost, making use of his advanced knowledge of the behavior of metal arch and metal truss forms under loading Eiffel designed a light, airy but strong structure that presaged a revolution in civil engineering and architectural design. And after it opened to the public on the 15th of May 1889, it ultimately vindicated itself aesthetically. The Eiffel Tower stands on four lattice girder piers that tapper inward and join to form a single large vertical tower. As they curve inward, the piers are connected to each other by networks of girders at two levels that afford viewing platforms for tourists. By contrast, the four semicircular arches at the tower's base are purely aesthetic elements that serve no structural function. Because of their unique shape, which was dictated partly by engineering considerations but also partly by Eiffel's artistic sense, the piers required elevators to ascend on the curve. The glass cage machines designed by the Otis Elevator Company of the United States became one of the principal features of the building, helping establish it as one of the world's premier tourist attractions. The plan to build a tower 300 meters high was conceived as part of preparations for the World's Fair of 1889. Both in the joint of two crossbow men, the wager was to study the possibility of erecting an iron tower on the Champ de Mars with a square base 125 meters across and 300 meters tall. Selected from among 107 projects, it was that of Gustav Eiffel, an entrepreneur, Maurice Kochlin and Emile Nogier, both engineers, and Stefan Sauvest, an architect that was accepted. Emile Nogier and Maurice Kochlin, the two chief engineers in Eiffel's company, had the idea for a very tall tower in June of 1884. It was to be designed like a large pylon with four columns of latest work girders separated at the base and coming together at the top and joined to each other by more metal girders at regular intervals. The tower was a bold extension of this principle up to a height of 300 meters, equivalent to the symbolic figure of 1,000 feet. On September 18th, 1884, Eiffel registered a patent for a new configuration allowing the construction of metal supports and pylons capable 
of exceeding a height of 300 meters. In order to make the project more acceptable to public opinion, Nogay and Coachlin commissioned the architect Stefan Sauvest to work on the project's appearance. The tower was assembled using wooden scaffolding and small steam cranes mounted onto the tower itself. The assembly of the first level was achieved by the use of 12 temporary wooden scaffolds 30 meters high and four larger scaffolds of 40 meters each. Sandboxes and hydraulic jacks replaced after use by permanent wedges allowed the metal girders to be positioned to an accuracy of 1 millimeter. On the 7th of December 1887, the joining of the major girders up to the first level was completed. The pieces were hauled up by steam cranes which themselves climbed up the tower as they went along using the runners to be used for the tower's lifts. It only took five months to build the foundations and 21 to finish assembling the metal pieces of the tower. Considering the rudimentary means available at the time, this could be considered record speed. The assembly of the tower was a marvel of precision, as all chroniclers of the period agreed. The construction work began in January 1887 and was finished on the 31st of March 1889. On the narrow platform at the top, Eiffel received his decoration from the Legion of Honor. Debate and controversy surrounding the Eiffel Tower Even before the end of its construction, the tower was already at the heart of so much debate. Enveloped in criticism from the biggest names in the world of art and literature, the tower managed to stand its ground and achieve the success it deserved. Notable names in the world of art and literature were highly critical of the building. Some names were Charles Garnier, Paul Verlaine and Francois Coupe and they hurled insults like this is truly a tragic street lamp. This mass of iron gymnasium apparatus is incomplete, confused and deformed. Once the tower was finished, the criticism burnt itself out in the presence of the completed masterpiece and in the light of the enormous popular success with which it was greeted, it received 2 million visitors during the World's Fair of 1889. Here are a few more facts about the Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower is a must-see for everyone who visits Paris as a little over 6 million people climb the Eiffel Tower every year. The tower is open every day and even at night from 9.30 a.m. to 11.45 p.m. and in summer from 9 a.m. to 12.45 a.m. For 130 years, the Eiffel Tower has been a powerful and distinctive symbol of the city of Paris and by extension of France. At first, when it was built for the 1889 World's Fair, it impressed the entire world by its stature and daring design and symbolized French know-how and industrial genius. A monument known around the world and a unique tourist attraction. The Eiffel Tower has literally accompanied the people of Paris and its suburbs in their daily life. Rising to a height of 330 meters, it can be seen from all over Paris and beyond, day and night, thanks to its lighting and twinkling illumination at fixed times and its beacon that reaches out to 80 kilometers at 360 degrees. The tower has three floors that are open to the public, the first floor, the second floor and the summit. The second floor has two levels as does the summit, an enclosed lower level and an open air level above. Visitors can reach the first two floors either by the stairs or by elevator. 
The ascension from the second floor to the summit is only possible by elevator. The Eiffel Tower weighs approximately 10,100 tons. The metal framework alone weighs 7,300 tons, while the paint that protects the structure only weighs 60 tons. The iron used to build the Eiffel Tower went through a refining process called puddling, which eliminated the excess carbon when the ore was melted. Following this process, you obtain almost pure iron, which was, according to Gustav Eiffel, at the time the best and most robust of materials. That's all we have on this episode of Centurions, where we feature anything man-made that has lasted over 100 years. And this week, we feature the ever-breathtaking marvel of engineering and construction, the Eiffel Tower. I'm Dimitri. Please like, subscribe, and share. See you soon, and thanks for watching.